It is a first for humanity. NASA successfully changed the path of an asteroid. Two weeks ago, the space agency used a spacecraft to hit the asteroid Dimorphos. NASA shared the news in a press conference on Tuesday. Now, this is a watershed moment for planetary defense and a watershed moment for humanity. And this mission shows that NASA is trying to be ready for whatever the universe throws at us. The mission was called DART, the Double Asteroid Redirection Test. Granted, this asteroid did not pose a threat to Earth. It was just a test target to see if asteroid deflection could work. But now, it's making history as the world's first planetary defense test. And it's also the first time we've intentionally changed the direction of a celestial body. Back with us now is Dr. Nancy Chabot, the DART coordination lead at the Johns Hopkins University's Applied Physics Laboratory. Teams there developed and led the DART mission. Dr. Chabot, welcome back. Good to see you again. Oh, great to be back. It's been uh, 18 days and a really eventful 18 days. And you've been grinning ear to ear ever since. How much sleep have you gotten, really? Tell me the truth. How much sleep did y'all get <laughs> after this impact happened? Because you, because the teams that were behind this, you look like you could have danced on the ceiling all night long. Well, some people got some sleep, but actually the telescopes got to work right <laughs> afterwards. So even that evening, we were getting the first telescopic data, um, seeing the ejecta plumes and seeing the rock that was thrown off. And the telescopes have been working ever since, and the team's been working ever since. We have managed to sleep a little bit, but we have a really international team. So I guess we sleep in stages, you know, some people are working and some people are <laughs> sleeping. So it feels like it's just going on constantly, but it's been a whirlwind of 18 days. And it was just so exciting earlier this week to make the big announcement that we did in feed successfully deflect this asteroid. It's so cool. It is so very cool. And just the amount of like, just the math alone just the level of math that goes into figuring out how to fire something from the Earth and compensate for the atmosphere and various kinds of radiation and gravity and kind of make it hit the right way, it's I, it's, I could pass out right now. But talk about some of the science that happened once the impact occurred to determine how successful the impact was. Yeah, well, one of the main tasks we wanted to do after doing that amazing technology feat that you talked about of hitting this asteroid in space that we had never seen before when it was 7 million miles away at 14,000 miles per hour, um, then we wanted to know how much did we actually move it. And so telescopes here on the Earth got to work, and uh, they took repeated measurements of this double asteroid system night after night, and uh, we knew that it used to be that Dimorphos orbited the larger asteroid Didymos every 11 hours and 55 minutes. Um, and by making these telescopic observations, um, both with optical telescopes and with radar telescopes independently, they gave the same answer that now this moon asteroid Dimorphos goes around every 11 hours and 23 minutes. And so this is an orbital change of 32 minutes. Um, and it's a really spectacular and promising result for planetary defense and potentially applying this technique in the future if the need ever arose. What about images of the impact? Have you been getting good pictures of the test? Will, those, will we be able to see what this actually looked like? So the Italian Space Agency had a CubeSat, this little mini spacecraft about the size of a briefcase that uh, did a close by, flyby after DART's impact three minutes later. It took just over 600 images actually and stored them on board. And they've been sending them back in the last days and weeks. And some of those actually were shared as well. So um, the Italian Space Agency is in this international collaboration with NASA for this planetary defense test mission. And the images from that little spacecraft have been just spectacular. They've seen these streamers of ejecta that have strung out from the surface. Um, and they're putting together movies and piecing that together. Now, that spacecraft, that little mini Lichia cube, uh, flew by three minutes later and then was long gone. But since then, the Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope, and all of these telescopes on the Earth have been continuing to monitor it. And there's actually now a tail of ejected debris that's going for more than 10,000 kilometers behind it. So it's sort of a, looks like a comet almost when you look at it from these optical telescopes. So all of this is giving us insight into what type of material made up this asteroid, what sizes were, how this impact event actually happened. Uh, so much exciting science, really. I could go on and on, and the team's been so excited to delve into the models to try to understand this. So 
the period change of 32 minutes was a, a great initial result to release. And now we're looking forward to digging into the data even more to just understand not just what we did to Demorphos, but what this means for potentially applying it in the future. And briefly, before I have to let you go, what is the potential for having to apply this in the future? Does it seem like the Earth is going to need to defend from an asteroid or some other kind of celestial body anytime soon before we go? Well, asteroids have been hit, uh, Earth has been hit by asteroids for billions of years, and this is going to continue in the future. So it's kind of a cosmic uh, inevitability in a lot of ways. So it's great that we've taken this first step to potentially prevent this in the future if we needed to. The key is that along with having the technology, you need to know where the asteroids are and you need to have the warning time. So along with planetary defense and this technology to doing something about it, you want to also find all these asteroids and track them and know where they are, and then we'll be in a great position. Right. Dr. Nancy Chabot, Johns Hopkins, good to see you again. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.